Hello, my name is Travis Smith. I'm an instructor at Health One EMS and I'm here to demonstrate patient assessment and management of the trauma patient. My first step will be to take appropriate BSI precautions. In this case, I want to put on gloves and safety glasses. Next, I need to make sure the scene is safe for me and my crew. I quickly evaluate the scene and patient to determine the mechanism of injury or nature of the patient illness. I also take a moment to determine the number of the patients and request additional resources if appropriate. I now direct my assistant to manually maintain C-spine immobilization if needed. I form my general impression. I want to verbalize my impression with a report similar to this. I observe an approximately 20-year-old female who appears to be in moderate distress. I now need to determine the patient's level of consciousness. If their eyes are open or they are awake, I am going to introduce myself. By talking directly to the patient, I can determine whether they are confused or disoriented. If the patient's eyes are closed, I need to determine what their level of responsiveness is using the APPU scale. I will determine if there are any immediate life threats. If so, I need to address those first before I continue my assessment. Another thing I have determined when the patient speaks to me is that their airway is open. If the patient does not respond, I assess their airway for patency. In both cases, I ensure adequate respiratory effort and ventilations and assess breathing for adequacy, rate, tidal volume, and effort. If necessary, I will use an airway adjunct and provide appropriate oxygen therapy. I will also manage any injury which may be causing airway compromise. Now I assess circulation. I check for the presence of a pulse at the carotid artery or radial artery depending on the patient's level of consciousness. When I check for a pulse, I am assessing for approximate rate, strength, quality, and rhythm. I will control any obvious life-threatening bleeding. I assess for skin condition including color, moisture, and temperature. I evaluate and initiate shock management as needed. I now must make a transport decision. Does this patient require an emergent transport to the nearest appropriate facility, or is the condition not as serious, and am I able to take a bit more time with the patient? If possible, I will obtain a sample history. This may require me to ask bystanders for information. Once I have completed the primary assessment and manage any life threats, I will begin the secondary assessment. Starting at the head, I will systematically check the entire patient looking for additional injuries and life threats. When I inspect the head, I look at the patient's mouth, nose, face, scalp, eyes and ears, and pupil response. I look for injury or complaint of pain when I palpate. Also, I pay close attention to symmetry. I want to make certain both pupils respond equally to light and the patient moves both sides of their face equally. Next, I move to the neck. I look for the position of the trachea, jugular venous distension, and palpate the spine for any signs of trauma or pain on palpation. The chest is a frequent site of injury. I want to visualize and palpate the entire chest for symmetry, stability, and trauma or pain on palpation. At this point, I also want to auscultate lung sounds. Once I have assessed the chest, I move to the abdomen. Again, I want to visualize and palpate all four quadrants of the abdomen. I am looking for any signs of trauma or pain on palpation. The pelvis, genitalia, and perineum need to be assessed since a large amount of blood can be hidden in the pelvis. I will inspect and palpate the entire region, checking for deformity, crepitus, and pain. If needed, I will visually assess the genitals and perineum. I continue my assessment by inspecting and palpating the lower extremities. I assess motor, sensory, and circulation of both legs. Finally, I inspect, palpate, and assess the motor function, sensory, and distal circulations of both arms. Once I have completed my secondary assessment, I will complete a full set of vital signs. When I assess the patient's baseline vital signs, I am defining the patient's pulse rhythm, pulse quality, blood pressure, respiratory rate, respiratory quality, lung sounds, and pupillary response. Some of this I may have already gathered during my previous assessments. If that is the case, then I include those findings in my baseline vital signs. Now that I have completed my primary and secondary assessment and have a set of baseline vital signs, I can determine what my field impression is. My field impression of this patient is that she is suffering from multi-systems trauma. We have found a laceration to her arm and abdomen, an open fracture of her right lower leg, and an abrasion on her head. 
I take this time to manage any secondary injuries as needed or as time allows. I will continue to reassess the patient and make certain I note or correct any situations that arise during transport. When I arrive at the hospital, I will give my report, including any information I have collected during my care of this patient. In order to adequately care for patients suffering from traumatic injuries, an EMT must approach patient assessment in a logical, step-by-step -step manner. Identifying injuries and providing appropriate treatment may make the difference between life and death. Thank you for watching. Good luck and stay safe.